the cord. Very good. We're, we're just we... more coming in. I think Professor Cornett and a few more. So if we want to wait a few more minutes to get started, that'd be great. Absolutely. Yeah, no rush, no rush. Yeah. Just okay. give me one sec here. Let's go run the restroom. So where are you at right now? I am in Slovakia, Bratislava. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> right in the center of Europe. Yes. So cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I just I just moved here actually from Spain, so we're gonna be we're gonna be living here for a year because my uh, my girlfriend and I were having a a baby in uh, October. Oh my gosh! Congratulations! Thank wow. you so much. Yeah, we're very excited. So it's gonna be oh. a, a, Hall a Halloween baby. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, good for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really looking forward. Is it's the first. Birthday? Yeah, first. Yeah. Oh my a little, God. most likely a little girl. Okay. Aw, <laughs> so sweet. We're very excited. Yes. Yeah. So we, uh, she's from Slovakia. And this is where I did my university. So we moved back here mm -hmm. to uh, be a little bit closer to um, to her family. You know, have the family support and all that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, having family around is always good, especially with the little ones. Absolutely. Yes. I learned that from uh, my niece when she was growing up. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Need the help. Uh, how are you guys doing? How's everything in Florida? Good. Hot, hot, hot. Um, yeah. I just got back. I went to Rome, Paris, and London for a couple of weeks for fun. Beautiful. And it was not hot. Well, Rome was warm, but Paris and London was windy and freezing and rainy. <laughs> but, you never uh, know what you're going to get there, do you? No, no. I was really thinking it was going to be warm in the first, second week of June, but I was wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it was a good time, so. Everything's all over the place. Yeah, um, well, yeah. So. It's a NAFSA at the end of May, so that was huge and exciting. I'm going to go next year. I haven't been yet, but I heard it's a madhouse. I heard it's just absolutely. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Like, I think I'll <laughs> take a break from it next year. But first of all, it's super expensive. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I just went last year for the first time and then this year. And so I'm like, okay, I just need a break <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to regroup yeah. a little, you know, stick with CCID and FCIE. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And FCIE, they've moved to um, uh, Seminole now. Yeah. Yeah. So that was interesting. Absolutely. Well, good. Are you still working with them a lot? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we ran a few programs with FCIE or with Seminole? Um, with FCIE. With FCIE? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Valencia was always kind of our, um, was, you know, kind of one of our flagship um, schools that we provide programs for. So, you know, they put off to Seminole. Um, we're not in contact quite as much, but we're definitely, you know, still supporting the, um, you know, um, the organization. And, um, we, we run programs for Seminole as well. So, yeah, we're involved on all sides. All right. Good deal. Cool. I think we've got most people here now. Sorry, that Huh? I got caught up talking to Holly. Uh, okay. And, I, you know, I don't see you on in here anymore. Should we be seeing you, Christian? You should get caught in the restroom. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, was, I was calling you from the restroom. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> That's all good. Right. I'll yeah, no, no, no. I'll I'll um I'll save for later. But uh, welcome everybody. How many um uh, how many people? Do? One, two, three, four, five. I see five, six. I think I saw. I think we're only missing Logan. I see that on any other. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Okay, Alan seven. And my wife. Hello, seven. Yeah. And my wife. Hello. Hello. So real quick, guys. Um, who just raise your hands if you've ever been to Costa Rica before? No one. Perfect. All right. Is that? I have. Sorry, I'm out of screenshot. Okay. Yes, we've got one in there. All right. Perfect. Have you been to the Caribbean side before? No, we went down the Pacific side. We stayed in Ojo Chal. Okay. Oh, oh, Uvita. Perfect. Yeah, Marina Baena. That's amazing down there. It's very yeah, beautiful. It was, it was unreal. So. Did you go to the whale tail? Did you see where the? Did you get to see the water? Um, yeah. We, went, we didn't go out to the whale tail. Um, but we, we sat and, uh, we went up to Alturas Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, we stayed in, in, uh, Ojo Chow most of the time. Okay. So, 
Uh, but yeah, we, we spent a couple days horseback riding through the jungle and stuff like that. So it's, it's, yeah, I, I guess the, uh, we, I, we, we've never been to the Atlantic side, but I heard it's really different. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what, just, to, just so I understand, what do you, what do you teach exactly? Um, I teach biology and environmental science. I'm teaching environmental for technically on this trip. I'm technically teaching bio two and environmental science. Perfect. Perfect destination. So yeah, the Caribbean side, the Atlantic side is, um, is different for sure. It's very unique because, um, uh, well, one, um, naturally speaking, it's, uh, it's one of the more, more biodiverse areas of the country. It's less developed. So, um, you know, you don't have big resorts and things like this, uh, little small towns kind of spread out along the coastline. And it's also, um, very um, different than other parts of Costa Rica because of the the local populations that are from there. So you have a um, large Afro-Caribbean community as well as um, indigenous, uh, the Bribri tribe, which um, we're going to spend uh, a lot of time learning about both and experiencing um, culture and traditions of both as well. Um, but yeah, the Afro-Caribbean, um, Basically, when, uh, when slavery was abolished in Jamaica, um, a lot of Jamaicans migrated to Costa Rica because they were able to own land, they were able to work, and um, they, uh, they found employment helping uh, build the railroad from Limon, which is the main port city, all the way to uh, San Jose for the coffee trade. And then um, they started uh, mingling with the, um, with the local natives, mainly the Bribri. And um, it just, you know, generation after generation after generation, um, you just have absolutely beautiful, gorgeous people just from uh, both sides mixing very nicely and, um, and the cultures as well. But yeah, I'm going to dive into that with you. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick and um, we can, one sec here, view, exit full screen. I'm going to share my screen with you guys real quick, and then we can dive into the um, actual itinerary. And guys, basically, so what today is about is um, I want you to be able to ask, uh, it's basically getting you prepared for the trip and making sure that, um, you know, you have the opportunity to um, ask any questions that you might have. So um, let's see your Chrome tab. There we go. Share. All right, cool. Can you guys see that? It's I'm gonna make it. Yeah. I'm gonna make it big. One sec here. Yeah. Is that too small? It's bigger, but it's a little blurry, or it's just my eyes. Okay. One sec here. I'm sure there's a way to zoom in. Let's see here. Escape. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Zoom. So yeah, guys. So basically, today is all about um, uh, asking questions. So. We'll start with uh, the fun part, the itinerary, and then we can talk about kind of like the more boring stuff like packing and stuff, even though that's super essential, okay? Because um, I don't want you to bring down these huge six-month suitcases. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, it's a lot better. Yeah. Perfect, okay. If, if I go too fast or if you can't see anything, just let me know, okay? And again, I'm, uh, I'm recording all this so you can come back to it later. So, um, yeah. Sorry, what was that? No, Christian, we have Professor Randolph on my cell phone too here, so he might um, be speaking throughout too. So he's the other co-leader oh. for the trip. Hello, Professor Randolph, welcome. Hello, thanks. All right, perfect. Um, so uh, if my, my, one of my colleagues, um, the account mentor, he told me that you're arriving around, I believe it's around noon on Saturday, is that correct? Something like that, do you know off the um da, 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 i think it's a little later depart at eleven thirty a.m okay and the, let's see here um yeah arriving twelve forty four p.m okay great there's about a there's a three hour time difference they're on um on uh well two hour time difference they're on mountain time so uh i guess it'll only be a, a three hour flight for you but yeah, so basically, whenever you guys arrive, um, our on-ground team, Ludric, um, or Tito, they will be waiting for you at the airport, and you'll just walk directly out of the airport with your luggage, and um, they'll have a sign waiting for you there that will say um, Polk State College or Study Abroad Association, and um, you'll hey, join Chris, them. Let me ask you something real quick, just to make sure we're good with the itinerary. Um, 
the 8th is a Monday. I think maybe that Saturday was that original date we were looking at coming in. Ah, the 8th is Monday. Excuse me. Yeah, I just pulled this up. Okay, I'll speak with Antonio. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'll speak with Antonio about this. Let me pull up my, uh, my calendar right now. Yeah, the, the days of the week, he probably didn't realize that, excuse me, um, July 8th is a Monday. And you are flying on July 8th, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, cool. I'll just, I'll just fix this in lifetime for you guys. Sorry about that. And I might have pulled up the, um, the incorrect one. But whenever you do arrive, <laughs> the, uh, the on-ground team will be waiting for you. I'll show you that. Um, but basically you'll arrive and as we go, I'll correct the days, but, um, once you arrive, they'll be waiting for you and then we'll get picked up and we'll, uh, we'll go transfer to, um, the hotel since you are arriving in the middle of the day. That's great because we're going to have an opportunity to go explore San Jose as the capital of uh, Costa Rica, a few million population, San Jose, Costa Rica in, um, in total is around 5 million uh, San Jose has uh, around two, so and the rest are spread out around the country. Um, the city is, uh, you know, it's busy, but um, there's also some nice green spaces. So we'll take you to a few beautiful parks, um, national parks. We'll take you to the Central Market, um, some other arts districts and places like that. It's located in the Central Valley of the country. So basically, you'll be completely surrounded um, uh, by these beautiful uh, green hills, um, we are going in the green season, which is actually my, my favorite um, time to go down because it's not um, extremely hot as it can be in March or um, February, March, or April. Because February, March, or April is just pure sun, no clouds, very, very hot. So uh, you guys are going in the green season, which means that um, in the afternoon, there will be you know, a couple of rain showers, very short, not cold rain very comfortable rain um doesn't disturb any of the activities that we have planned and then during the evening the night time it will uh it will typically rain and then in the morning when the sun comes up at 6 a.m the um it will, it will be pure sunshine until around 1 p.m and then there'll be a couple showers in the afternoon sun rises at six sun goes down at six um, and that's pretty much constant throughout the year you pretty much have a steady 80 degrees Fahrenheit to 85 degrees Fahrenheit um, year round in the areas that we'll be. If you go into some of the cloud forest areas, it'll get a little bit cooler in the evenings, but where we're going to be, it'll be, it'll be humid and, and tropical. I guess not too much different than what you're used to. Um, after we have our, our walking tour around San Jose, we'll have a nice, um, we'll take you back to the hotel. You can get checked in. Luckily, we won't be fighting any um, jet lag, so you'll be energized nice. And um, that night, we'll go for a, a proper welcome dinner. So wide variety of menu options for, uh, that can cater all types of diets. Um, most important thing is that it's a lot of um, mainly uh, typical local, um, local cuisine, but also... Um, you know, um, international food. If if uh, if you're not ready to dive into the uh, to the local food just yet, okay. Um, and then I'll sh I'll show you the hotels and stuff like that that we're staying at in a second. But we'll just keep moving on. Uh, the next morning we're gonna wake up. You'll have breakfast, and every day um, after breakfast we have a day briefing. Okay, so we let you know kind of what to expect for uh, for the day, what you're gonna need, how to pack properly, etc. Okay. Um, after the day briefing, our bus will come and pick us up, and we're going to head down to the Caribbean coast. It's about a four-hour drive if there are no um, you know, accidents on the highway or traffic, things like this. A uh, four-hour drive is a beautiful drive. Um, actually, cuts the highway cuts through um, the nation's uh, largest national park. Um, this is primary rainforest that hasn't been um, really touched other than the, the highway that cuts through it taking to the Caribbean, but it's a beautiful scenic drive. You're going to pass hundreds of rivers. Um, just, it's absolutely gorgeous. You'll see wildlife as well as we're going down. And then, uh, and then we, we finally hit the, uh, the Caribbean coast. Um, there's not a bathroom on the bus, but, uh, whenever you need to, uh, to go, just shout out to the, you know, to the guides or the driver and, um, they'll make it happen for you. Um, uh, additionally, you know, if you need coffee or things like that, then uh, they'll also make stops for you. So that's fine. 
Um, once we arrive in Cahuita, which will be our base um, for the uh, the majority of the trip, um, we'll get you. We'll drop the bags off at the hotel at the Cahuita National Park Hotel. Um, we'll have talent orientation. We'll we'll talk about all the local projects that uh, that we've established and that we're continuing to run there. Um, our our team, our our local team of guides, are from Cahuita. So um, whenever you're with them in the town. Um, you know, you, you have instant respect from the community. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful community. The people are amazing. Um, they're very, very welcoming. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a very, very special place. So it has a population of around 900 people. Um, it has um, one of the most um, biodiverse national parks um, in the country. It's the only national park that is... Um, completely funded by donations. Um, it uh, has Costa Rica's largest coral reef. Um, and uh, it's just made up of uh, beautiful hiking trails full of sloths and capuchins and howler monkeys and tons and tons of different types of uh, local flora and fauna. So um, You'll love it. It's a little piece of paradise. Pristine white beaches as well as black sand uh, beaches from, uh, uh, you know, from um, volcanic uh, volcanic sand. And um, yeah, it's it's great. It's a little small town. You'll get to know a lot of the people, and especially since we'll be working uh, at the at the local elementary school as well, it'll be um, it'll be great for you guys. Uh, we do stay at the Cahuita National Park Hotel, which is right at the entrance of the um, the national park. So um, sometimes the, um, the the primates will come and visit. Uh, will visit you on the deck in the mornings and at breakfast and whatnot. Um, but after we get you oriented um, oriented with the uh, with the town, we'll uh, we'll go to one of the best spots in town to have a welcome lunch. They cook everything traditional way on wood fire. Um, and then, um, we'll, we'll go for a proper, uh, wildlife tour of, uh, the national park. Um, in Costa Rica, as you guys will discover very quickly, um, rice and beans or beans and rice is the, uh, the go-to staple. Okay. Uh, the Caribbean coast, they make it a little bit different. They add coconut milk to it. It's absolutely delicious. Um, coconut milk and they cook it with coconut oil. So it has a, has a, um, a very nice flavor. Um, on the Caribbean side, due to the Afro-Caribbean population, um, they you know they incorporate a lot of English words as well. So instead of calling it um, you know instead of calling it pinto like you would for just normal rice and beans, they call it rice and beans. Okay, so in English, so if you if you order rice and beans, that means it's going to be with coconut milk. Okay, but you you'll learn that when you go down there. Uh, Ludric are um, our uh, main group leader and country manager, um, he's an outstanding um, uh, chef. So uh, he'll definitely share with you some, some local recipes as well. Um, that evening after we have our first welcome dinner, we'll go for a traditional, um, we'll, we'll actually have the, we'll either go to one of the local, um, one of the local hangout spots, restaurants, um, you know, kind of uh, um, bar cafes and for live clips of music or the guys will come and they'll perform at the hotel for us. Um, they're, they're still um, using traditional clips. So um, instruments, uh, these guys are now in their seventies, um, maybe even their eighties and they're still playing and maintaining the traditions of the, uh, of, of clips of music. So it's a unique experience. It's, it's an art, a, a form of music that's kind of, um, you know, say dying out or um, not being played quite as often. So, and that's kind of the roots, you know, of uh, where your reggae originated and then turned into all the different variations on from there. So um, it's, it's a great, it's a great experience. Um, in the morning we have um, optional um, birding unless it's required in your class and you got to be there, but um, uh, early morning uh, uh, birding. So the guides will take out the scopes and they'll take you to the best lookout points um, around the town. And you'll just see an abundance of, um, of uh, birds as well as other wildlife. Um, the next morning uh, we'll go to, af after breakfast, um, we'll go uh, snorkeling. As I mentioned, um, Cahuita National Park is not only inland, but it's also a marine park. Uh, it has uh, Costa Rica's largest coral reef. Um, 
And it's actually surprisingly um, in, in good shape in comparison to a lot of reefs um, in the Caribbean. Uh, some parts of it were uh, burst out. Sorry? So I think I, I think we, snorkeling. yeah I think we were looking at eliminating snorkeling. But let me ask you this: Is gear included if they did snorkel? Do they have to bring their own gear? Yeah, gear is always included. Absolutely. Yeah. I I apologize, guys. Um, let me. Uh, I mean, we're, yeah, we're we still talking. Not like we're talking. Huh? I'm, this does not sound like what we talked about. Yeah. It, it, guys, just give me one one second. There might be I might be a accidentally reading the. Um, let, let me let me double check the itinerary. Yeah, no, because we went back and forth on the itinerary um, multiple times uh, with uh, with him to make sure it's perfect. I'll make sure that we I'm reading the right orientation packet for you. Give me one second, guys. It's me. Yeah, I think the only thing um, we were thinking of, I think we took surfing I out, and I don't see surfing on here yeah. yet. Um, and I think I think the snorkeling was um, probably being taken out, but a huge part of that was we didn't want to pack gear, so that's good to know that there's gear. But also, if it's not included in the class, we didn't necessarily want to take any more risk than we needed. Yeah, I mean, how basically... Um, however however it needs to be for you guys we Thanks, will 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 accommodate you know um okay. but yeah here um i was just going back in the folder this is the only orientation packet i have so i apologize again um i'm not the uh i'm not the account manager on this but i will make sure that you have the most absolute up-to-date um materials prior to traveling so by tomorrow i can get make sure you have all of that um, so I'll put this, we can, we, we'll put it in italics for now. Okay. And then, um, and then we'll, we can refer back to our emails to make sure that everything's on point. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so in the afternoon, um, Brebury village. Okay. So, um, the Brebury tribe is, um, is unique in Costa Rica as they were able to sustain their culture, um, um, for much longer than uh, many of the indigenous groups throughout the country. Um, that's because of having access to the Talamanca Mountains, uh, which share a border between Panama and Costa Rica. So um, whenever the Spaniards arrived in the, um, the late 1400s, early 1500s, many of the Bribri retreated into the uh, Talamanca Mountains and uh, for protection, um, you know, and uh, just to, because they're unaware of what was, you know, gonna, gonna be happening with the new settlers. So um, since it was dense jungle and, and very, very dense jungle, sometimes you have to walk, you can walk for days to arrive to some of these villages. Um, they were able to maintain their, uh, their traditions, their language um, and all of that. And uh, we have the opportunity to, um, spend time um in one of the uh in the town Brebri itself in one of the um sustainable communities there now we have to you know we have to remember that it's you know it's 2019 um th they're no longer wearing you know traditional dress you know they're, they're using cell phones it's uh you know very modern right however on the other hand, um, they still have maintained a, a, a lot of their culture. Okay, so um, when we're there, we're going to learn all about natural medicines, how you can use your environment, especially in uh, tropical places like this, um, how you can use your environment for pretty much everything you need in day-to-day uh, -day life. So um, tr natural medicines, what they use for um, – different ointments or different like teas and fusions, um, what they use for arthritis, uh, even cancer, um, you know, what they use for uh, dyeing clothes, okay? So what leaves make the color orange, what roots make the color blue, on and on and on, how to make traditional clothing out of, out of um, these plants or how to, make, uh, how to make hunting weapons, how to make um, a bow and, you know, bow and arrow, for example out of uh, different trees and different um, natural fibers from leaves. So it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, in addition to that, uh, we get to learn how to make chocolate the traditional way. Okay, so cacao, 
Um, you learn all about how, you know, take basically the entire process, taking it from the tree, opening the cacao, enjoying the, the gooey liquid that's on the, uh, the cacao seed, and then uh, how they dry out the beans, and then later how they roast them, and then um, mash them, and then uh, turn them into uh, to chocolate paste, and then add natural flavors to them like uh, sugar cane or coconut or or just eating it pure raw. So, sometimes it's a little bitter for some people, but um, but it's uh, you should definitely try it. So you're gonna get to do that yourself, and you're gonna see how they do it the traditional way. The cacao is a uh, is a holy ceremony drink. As, um, as it is with many um, cultures in Central America. Um, the Bribri also have a uh, beautiful waterfall and rivers. Um, so we'll go, visit the, um, we'll go visit the waterfalls. And, um, and yeah, it'll just be an amazing day with the community. That, uh, that evening we'll return back to Cahuita. Bribri is only about 30 minutes away from Cahuita, okay? So it's very close. Um, that evening we'll go back, we'll have a group dinner, you know, kind of reflection, talk about the day. And then uh, we'll go for a nocturnal wildlife hike that evening. Okay. Any, any questions, guys, for now, or are we are we doing well? Good. You good? Okay. Cool. We'll so, have a class debrief every day. Okay. You, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, that's your that's your time to 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 do as this entire itinerary is. Um, is flexible. So anytime you want to have presentations or work in um, lectures or debriefings, discussions, we're completely flexible. So uh, we can move anything around for you. So yeah. Well, can we do it at the hotel after mm -hmm. the main activity? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And reflect yeah. On what they saw. Yeah, there's plenty of um, there's plenty of space. Normally, we do that on like the second floor. There's a nice sitting area, and it's like kind of your own private area. That that's normally where we have like, a lot of times. We'll have, the, we'll have the projector, or we'll have a group discussion up there. So yeah, that'll be perfect for you. Just let Ludric and Tito know, like say, hey guys, and they'll ask you every day normally anyway. But just say, hey guys, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we have time to do this, and they'll accommodate. No problem. Um, the, uh, the following day, uh, we're going to visit the uh, Sloth Sanctuary in the, uh, in the morning. It's about 15, 20 minutes away from Cahuita. Um, basically, they take in, they rescue a lot of sloths who have been, uh, who have been injured mainly by, um, by uh, automobiles. Um, you know, since the sloths are quite slow to move and, um, you know, their territory has been um, modified with roads, they um, a lot of times they they they'll they'll cross the roads to get to the other side if there's not a power line for them to, you know, um, kind of climb across. Uh, that they'll go across the road and oftentimes uh, they might be hit by a car. So this sloth sanctuary, um, they take in a lot of injured sloths and um, they they you know do their best to um, revive revive them as as much as they can. And um, yeah, it's great. I mean. Everyone loves the sloths, and they're, and they're fascinating, and they're very, very interesting. So um, it's a great stop along the way. Um, in the afternoon, we'll go to uh, Care Beans, a uh, cacao farmer cafe, and you're going to learn a lot more about um, uh, chocolate production in the region, especially um, historical chocolate production, um, cacao production, I should say. Um, that region where we are in the South Talamanca area, right there, they have um, in, in a very, very unique type of cacao. Um, and still in some of the trees are, you know, a couple, a couple hundred years old and they're still bearing um, cacao fruit. So um, it's really, really unique and they've done a lot of science with it and they've, um, They've studied the, the DNA of the local um, of the local trees in the area, and it's uh, now they actually you know they can claim that they have like a pure pure breed original one from uh, this this region. So that whole region, the South Caribbean, there used to be um, cacao plantations until um, a uh, basically a disease took over all of the plants and wiped it out, and then that's when. Um, you know, you had the larger fruit companies come in and start to, um, 
uh, grow bananas and uh, pineapples and things like this. But originally it was cacao, it was chocolate. So we're going to go to Carabines. Um, it's a local coffee shop there uh, run by uh, a good friend of ours, Paul. And um, yeah, he's going to take you all around the farm. He's going to teach you everything you need to know about uh, cacao and chocolate. And then um, they'll take you to the factory where they produce it in the traditional way. And then you'll get to see, um, you'll visit the farm, the business, and you have kind of, um, you know, farm to bar chocolate. And um, yeah, it's really great. It makes a nice gift to bring home as well. So, and there's a lot, lots of interesting conversations for economics and things like that um, regarding the cacao in the region. That evening, um, we're going to have a uh, intro to Afro-Caribbean uh, herbal medicines. So, you know, we're spending time with the Bribri and we're looking at, we're learning about uh, natural medicines from the Bribri, but we're also going to learn about um, natural medicines and uh, remedies that came from uh, the Jamaican migrants, which originally had this from, uh, you know, uh, hit from, from Africa. And um, it's fascinating. So... Um, That'll be another um, guest lecture that evening, and you'll learn what plants are helpful for, um, you know, pretty much for everything. I'm just going to modify the days here, guys. Again, sorry about that. Um, the next morning, we're going to go to the Jaguar Rescue Center, very similar to the Sloth Sanctuary, except for um, it, it has a, a larger variety of, um, of, of animals and wildlife. Um, basically same concept. They bring in, um, animals that have been injured in the wild. They bring them in, they nurse them and the, you know, the visitors that come and love to see baby sloths or, um, you know, taper or, um, lots of different types of all different types of birds and, um, howler monkeys, of course. Um, it kind of just, it sustains the project, but, uh, it's always a highlight of the trip. Um, it's very, very informative. Um, and, um, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely like it. Not far from where the Jaguar Rescue Center is, is Manzanillo Gandoka. Um, almost, it doesn't have the status of a national park, but, um, it's, it, you know, it definitely should. Um, it's mainly primary forest, um, you know, uh, um, beaches, you know, uh, Beaches, the beaches there, they don't, people don't visit the beaches. They're, uh, they're perfect Caribbean beaches. They're very, very beautiful. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of um, hiking trails in the area. So it's perfect for the naturalist guys to just take you through and um, show you a part of the, um, a part of the forest that hasn't um, been modified with um, any type of logging or, um, you know, it's, it's, it's mainly primary forest. So, um, it's beach jungle, same as in Cahuita. Um, uh, Manzanillo, you don't, you don't have to pay for it. It's free for everyone. There's some really beautiful um, lookout points. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. There's, there's a huge, huge abundance, abundance of wildlife there. And you can follow those trails all the way to Panama. So we're not going to go that far, but um, we'll go for a few hours for sure and uh, take in the surroundings. Um, that evening, uh, Gandoka is also very famous for, um, its sea turtle, um, conservation projects. It's one of the main beaches, uh, where turtles will come and nest. Um, we will be in July, so we are in nesting season. So, um, that's exciting. We will do, um, you know, hopefully we'll be lucky and we'll actually, um, actually get to experience um, a sea turtle coming on the beach and laying their eggs. It's fascinating. I've only seen it once, but I've been on the, I've been on the, the, uh, the beach patrol probably a dozen times. So we like to let everyone know beforehand that, you know, nature is not guaranteed. We can't guarantee, you know, when they're going to come. And it's also, it's a huge beach, but the fact that we're going there and we're participating is very important because, um, the, uh, the donations that we give to go to the organization allows the organization to employ local um, local people who um, who take who go for beach patrol I, Sorry? Christian, I think Logan said um, what type what type of turtles nest there is that what you said yeah I believe it's the um, it should be the leatherback but there are a couple different turtles that uh, in July it should be leatherback but there are a couple different turtles that nest there I'm gonna look it up for you right now well, 
seen it's, any of. It's the most impressive. <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen that. It's, it really is. Absolutely huge, right? Yeah. The um, yeah, I'll t I'll tell you exactly uh, which um, which ones. I believe th I believe three. Tell you the reps look in South Caribbean. So yeah, the leatherback is the main, and uh, and then as well as green and hawksbill, yeah. So, but leatherback is the is the main. Um, unfortunately, there is quite a bit of um, poaching of the eggs, um, so it, it's important that we support these projects because it allows the the local um, volunteers to uh, patrol the beach and to make sure that poachers aren't stealing the eggs. And then later, um, as they um, after they find a nest, they can they can move the eggs to a um, to to a hatchery and protect them, and then hopefully send them back out to uh, to sea again. And that that's a great experience that happens a little bit later in the um, in the fall. So uh, we won't get to see that, but hopefully we'll get to see the the initial part. Um, this is very close to Manzanillo again, Doke is right on the Panama border. Okay. So if you have your cell phone there, it'll say, welcome to Panama, but you're, you're not quite there yet. But, um, and then after that, we come back to Cahuita. It's around, it's around one hour. We have to go quite slow because the roads, the roads are not great. So we'll get back around midnight. Okay. Um, the following day, let's change this because after Friday comes Saturday. Sorry again, guys. We have the, um, we're going to Punta Mona, okay? So Punta Mona is a very, very special place. Um, it's a complete, it's an eco village, all right? Um, we're going to learn all about um, permaculture, um, you know, uh, um, harvesting and, uh, and growing all different types of, um, I believe they have over 150 different types of fruit trees. Um, on the property, everything that we eat comes from the property. Um, it's, uh, they don't consume any, um, uh, you know, there no fossil fuels or anything like that. It's all, um, renewable energy, solar, um, energy. The toilets are compost toilets. Um, we learn a lot we learn all about how to, um, how you can use permaculture to, yield the most food in different areas. We learn how to, um, again, about medicinal plants. Um, and then just a lot, a lot of information from the people who, who live there. They have a lot of volunteers who will come out and will spend six months, one year, or maybe a couple of years. Um, and they come and go and they share knowledge and then, um, and they have groups that come out and have courses on basically uh, sustainable agriculture. Um, so it's, a uh, it's really, really cool to see a community like that um, and just to, to learn to learn from them. Uh, that evening, we'll have a uh, we'll have a chocolate making party and uh, and a bonfire if the if the weather permits. But definitely, there'll be a chocolate making party. Like I said, when the sun goes down during the night, there's normally some rain showers. Um, but we are in the pure uh, we're in the we're in the pure jungle here, guys. Um, so it's uh, it's. It's, it's incredible. It's a great experience. We get there by boat. Yeah. So we go from a boat from Manzanillo around, um, basically around 45 minutes. And then we arrive into, uh, into Punta Mona. So there's uh, you can come by boat or you can come by hiking or horseback. That's the way to get there. It's beautiful. And you can check out their website online. It's great. They've got a lot of great drone footage, <clears throat> drone footage and stuff. So you can see everything, but you'll love it. It's uh, it's very exciting. Uh, the next morning we have uh, optional morning yoga. Um, I suggest try it if you never tried it, um, or if you if you're a yogi and you love yoga, then um, you're in the right place. But uh, it's great to do uh, to do yoga on a platform in the middle of the jungle. So um, the next day we're going to do ha have more of a farm tour. Uh, obviously, safety comes first, um, but we're going to learn a lot more about. Um, what they're producing out there, how the plants, you know, pollinator plants, why they benefit, medicinal plants, all these kind of things. Um, and we'll have a group lunch, and then we'll take the boat back to Manzanillo. We're going to head back to um, we're going to head back to uh, San Jose. From Manzanillo to San Jose, it's about a um, about a five hour drive, but um, there'll be stops, a lot, plenty of stops along the way. Like I said earlier, anytime. You need some food, you need a snack, you need a drink, you need to use the restroom. 
we're here to accommodate you guys and to make sure you have an absolute uh, perfect experience. And I'm very, very confident that you will. I'm going to send this to you, the updated version, and then I'll just double check with, um, with Antonio that um, all of uh, the edits and everything are properly. Yeah, and I'll send you the proper PDF. But um, I'm going to go over a couple more things um, here with you. So your tour guides are Ludric McLeod and uh, Tito Lopez. If you have um, WhatsApp, are you, are you setting up a WhatsApp group or a Facebook type of chat group? We could probably set up like a WhatsApp group. Yeah, set up a WhatsApp group. It's great because they can share photos and we can easily give like updates. For example, if it's like, hey guys, um, we need to be, the bus is going to be 20 minutes late or hey guys, we need to hustle because the bus needs to come early for any reason. Like um, a WhatsApp group is really good for communication and again, sharing photos and stuff like that. So if you can set up a WhatsApp group while everybody's in the States, you guys will have Wi-Fi um, everywhere except for the night that you're in Punta Mona. There won't be any Wi-Fi there. Here's where we're staying. We're staying at the uh, Palm House Inn Hotel in San Jose. It's um, right, right, right in the city center, right by the, um, the National Museum. Cahuita National Park Hotel, and um, of course, uh, Punta Mona. These are a few things, guys, that I want to go over to make sure that you have. If, if, you, um, if you don't already, please go get your passport as soon as possible. Okay, you're probably going to need to get it expedited, but um, if you don't have that, you definitely need that to travel, okay? Also, um, Antonio should have sent you a uh, electronic medical form just to fill out. Um, if not, I'll make sure it's sent to you tomorrow. Um, basically, it all stays confidential and private. It's only accessed in the case of a, uh, an emergency. But just so that we know if anybody has any allergies to different types of food or any types of medication, that we can access that in case we need to take anybody to a clinic. Okay, That's, de that's destroyed after the trip, guys. So um, your privacy is obviously um, is respected. Okay. Um, make sure that you have transportation to and from the airport, your, lo your local airport. And guys, make sure you build in plenty of time to get to the airport. Okay. The last thing you want to do is have any kind of car issues or any unforeseen, um, you know, surprises and then uh, have to rush and be stressed for your flight or worst case scenario, miss your flight. Okay. Um, Provide your, uh, your loved ones the, uh, the contact information on the form. And very, very important, guys, notify your bank that you're going to be out of the country, okay? Let them know you're going to be out of the country during the dates of travel so that way they don't block your card. You can use U.S. money in Costa Rica, okay? You can pay in U.S. dollars and they'll give you colones back in change. Um, the exchange rate should be around 550 colones to $1, uh, it changes regularly, but normally it's around 500, 550. Um, so 550 colones equals $1, okay? Um, but the guides will go over all the money with you when they arrive. They have beautiful money. Some of it's plastic and waterproof. Um, but yeah, so the reason I say debit card is I, I would prefer that you don't bring down a lot of U.S. cash, um, just in case, you know, if you bring all your spending money in us cash and then for some reason you misplace it or you unfortunately get pickpocketed or something like that, I don't want you to be stranded without your money. So, um, a debit card is normally what I recommend and we'll take you to the local ATMs and you can withdraw local, um, colonies right there. A lot of debit cards nowadays, a lot of banks nowadays don't charge for, um, international withdrawals. Many still do. Um, normally, it's around five U.S. dollars uh, per uh, transaction, and then some will charge you a small fee or something like that. But still, uh, most of the time, it's a better exchange rate than you're going to get if you're paying with U.S. money or if you're trying to exchange it somewhere. So, and you're, and you're not having to travel with all that cash. Okay, um, make sure you bring all of your uh, all of your uh, course materials, obviously. And um, very important that you pack your bags uh, within the uh, airlines uh, regulations, okay? So make sure you research that prior to travel. I'm going to encourage you to pack, um, pack as light as possible, okay? Um, with this weather, you really don't need, like, for example, I'll tell you, like, 
um, you know, heavy, like, like coats, things like this, you don't need it. Um, you might need like one, one hoodie, for example, that you could wear, um, in San Jose in the evening. It might, it might get a little bit chilly, but it's actually quite refreshing. Um, jeans you don't really need. The only time you'd wear jeans would be in, um, like in the evening in San Jose, like the first or last night that you're there. Um, but ma majority of the time you're going to be in shorts, um, swimsuits, tank tops, t-shirts, these kind of things. When you go for like the beach hike at night or the nocturnal hike, it's good if you have long, uh, long sleeve, um, long sleeve or uh, long pants, light, still light. They don't have to be heavy, but, um, long to protect you from, uh, mosquitoes. Um, but, uh, the rest of the time during the day, you're going to be in, you know, typical stuff you would wear, wear in Florida. Yeah. And most importantly, get excited. You guys are have an amazing time. Uh, you have to learn the, the, the local phrase, pura vida, means pure life. They say that for everything. It's for hello, goodbye, thank you, everything, pura vida, all right? So um, we do put here like a jacket, water resistant, if the rain bothers you. A lot of times I feel like I'm getting more wet from like becoming sweaty in my jacket, in my, my waterproof jacket than I am from the rain, so that's up to you. But shirts, t-shirts, um, you know, you guys need durable multi-purpose shoes, okay? So basically um, shoes that um, closed-toed preferably when you're going on your national park hikes, okay? The, um, whenever you're in the trails, you're in the wild, you're in the nature, closed-toed shoes are ideal. It's not mandatory, but we suggest it in case you're standing in a, um, you know, a fire ant hill or something like that. Um, flip-flops for showering okay you guys do have your own private bathrooms of course but if it's not my shower I wear flip-flops okay um, quick dry clothing quick dry shower towel I highly recommend it since it's so humid and wet many times it takes uh, it takes time for things to dry okay um, I would suggest that you bring in addition to your main kind of luggage either if you're bringing like a you know, a backpacking bag, or if you're bringing, uh, you know, a smaller suitcase or something like that, I encourage you to bring like a smaller suitcase, not a huge suitcase, just because if you bring like a big, big suitcase, you probably brought too many things, or if that's all you have, don't worry, that's fine, okay? But I do recommend that you bring an additional day pack with you, something that you can take, um, you know, on the hikes with you and things like that. You can keep your water, your camera, these kind of things, yeah? especially if it's water resistant, okay? If, if you don't have one that's water resistant, just get a couple of Ziploc baggies, uh, reuse them. You can use them every time you go and travel, get a couple of those gallon Ziploc baggies, keep all your electronics inside there, zip it up, put it in your bag, you're good to go. Um, I have some, you know, a couple of gallon Ziploc bags that I've used over and over and over on different, uh, different trips, okay? Uh, bring a uh, backup uh, copy of your passport. Same... Same uh, power adapters, guys, as uh, in the States. So uh, you don't need to bring anything. Um, and they have the same, uh, they have the same uh, voltage, yeah? So your electronics will not get fried. Again, apologies about the, um, the typos here. But basically, uh, same plugs as back home. Every electronic device that you have um, that you're using today will plug into the wall in Costa Rica. And they maintain around 100, 110 the input okay um you won't need a combo lock or padlock as you have private hotel rooms yeah so we'll remove that as well reusable water bottle this is very very important we try to have a no waste policy on the programs so um basically we are going to provide you drinking water throughout the trip okay you'll have five gallon jugs uh easy access and um i would um we'll put here one I would recommend that you uh, bring a reusable water bottle and stay hydrated. Fill up your water bottle um, regularly. If the jug's out, let Luja Gatito know, hey, guys, we need more water. Boom, they've got it. They'll bring it to you, and uh, you guys have unlimited water, okay? Don't drink the tap water on the Caribbean. Locals do, but um, I wouldn't advise it. You'll probably get a bad case of traveler's diarrhea. 
So I would avoid um, drinking the tap water. You can brush your teeth. That's fine. Just don't swallow the water. Okay. No um, do what? No ice. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No ice. And um, most of the times the restaurants are very, very good about this. Um, they use filtered water for all their ice. You can confirm that with them, but that's kind of across the board. They don't, they don't use, uh, they, they, they don't fill up tap water. They don't fill up ice trays with their tap water, but very smart. Definitely confirm that before consuming the ice. Um, but yeah, uh, most of the times it's, um, it's all filtered, all filtered water for that. But yeah. You, you guys will have, uh, access to that. So don't, don't, don't spend money. Um, and you know, have to throw away all those plastic bottles. Um, just use the, use the, the great water that we provide you. Uh, camera guys, for sure. You should definitely bring a camera. Uh, waterproof is better. Um, but if you don't have one, don't worry. Again, those little plastic baggies can come in handy. Uh, if you're going to be carrying on your bag, make sure you have travel size toiletries. Okay. Um, and then all these kind of small things, these are just optional, but, um, I, I like them. Uh, Small trash can liner bags separate your dirty clothes from your clean clothes, your wet clothes from your dry clothes. Okay. So these are only, only suggestions and uh, recommendations. Okay. You feel free to pack however you like. Okay. Now I always encourage travelers to carry on their luggage. However, if you want to check it, that's completely fine, especially when you're coming home with lots of great souvenirs, but do try to, um, you know, try to pack as light, uh, as light as possible for your own sake, because you will be responsible for carrying your bag. Okay. We don't, we don't have porters. So you're going to have to, you're going to have to take care of your luggage. Um, like I said, make sure there's a limit. There you go. Exactly. Respect the limit, check on, check the limit of the airline and especially with, uh, with spirit because they're tricky. So make sure you respect it, guys, and um, and trust me, you can definitely, definitely um, pack lighter than you imagine. Okay, um, I would suggest, guys, when it comes to like deciding, should I bring this or should I not bring this, I would suggest, um, you know, if it's something that's going to put a negative effect on your program, if you lose it, then I wouldn't bring it. Okay. Um, regarding electronics and things like this. I mean, um, I'm not sure if laptops are mandatory for the course. I assume not, but, um, oh. okay, perfect. Yeah. So like basically guys, you know, your, your cell phone can, is an all in one. You've got your alarm clock, you've got your currency converter, you've got your, you know, your internet and your, uh, and your, and your camera and video and everything all right there. So, um, so yeah, um, before and after the trip. Say that again, sorry. There's, there's coursework that they do before and after the trip. So okay, perfect. That they'll have to do like that during the trip. Excellent. So just field experience. That's the best. And Christian, is there laundry facilities at the hotel if they need to? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a there's a laundry mat right in the center of town. Everybody knows where it is. They can take you there. Um, it costs you know five dollars max. Um, they'll wash it. They'll dry it. They'll have it folded for you the next morning. Okay. And do they need mosquito netting in the rooms for the bed, or they it's all closed in? It's all good. All closed in at the hotel. Punta Mona has um, has mosquito netting. You do not need to bring your own. Um, I would bring some type of, um, um, repellent, um, especially if you can get the, um, you know, the, what are, the, the eco-friendly type. Um, I would, I would, I would suggest to bring some type of repellent down because, um, the mosquitoes can be, um, can be aggressive, um, at night, especially if you're down on the beach and stuff like that. But, um, uh, but yeah, in the in the rooms, you don't need to worry about um, you don't need to worry about that. Everything's closed off. Okay. But I would love to I would love to take any questions that you guys have about about anything. No questions. Oh, come on! There's there's got to be some questions. Don't be shy. Is Costa Rica is Costa Rica safe? Yes. 
Costa Rica is very safe. You just um, just need to watch your valuables. Um, I've we've been taking groups down there for um, nearly ten years. We've never had um, an incident of any type of physical um, crime or anything like that. It's very very safe. The people are wonderful. However, if there is a uh, you know nine hundred dollar phone sitting on a table and the person just went to the restroom, that phone might go missing very quickly. Right? I, I, but I think that's anywhere in the world, right? Yeah. Yes, it um, is. Let's see. Any other, any questions, guys, about anything? Come on. Is there, like, microwaves and stuff in the rooms? Microwaves in the room. That's a good question. Um, microwave? I don't know. Uh, refrigerator? Yes. In Coweta National Park Hotel, there is a refrigerator. Microwave, I'm not sure, but you can go downstairs and there's a restaurant downstairs and they can microwave for you. Awesome. All right. I'm not sure what you're bringing, but. Okay. Um, Are sand trees a problem on the beach at night? Say that, is it a problem to sleep on the beach at night? Are sand fleas a problem? Ah, sand fleas. In Punta Mona, um, sand fleas are annoying, so I would recommend to bring um, long socks in Punta Mona, um, but in Cahuita, no. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'm going to add that. Thank you, by the way. I'm going to add that uh, on here. We will add this here. Long socks. Yeah, one pair is fine. Thank you for that. Yes. Yeah, so, um, Cahuita, no, but, uh, in Punta Mona, they can, um, they can be a bit annoying. You don't need, uh, you don't need any vaccines guys. Um, like I mentioned, um, avoid the tap water in, on the Caribbean side, San Jose, no problem, but we're going to have water for you. The five, the jugs for you throughout the program, everywhere you go. All right. Nothing at all. Sorry, say that one more time. Um, I, let's go back to the snorkel. Oh. No, what is the depth of the snorkel? Oh, the, oh depth. the depth of the snorkel. There's some areas, there's some areas that are around, you know, 20 feet deep. Um, the, uh, the reef is when you get it, depend, obviously depending on how close you get to the reef, but uh, you can, I mean, 10, 10 feet up to um, all the way up to the water. So um, uh, there's plenty of options for free diving as well. Um, there's a there's a there's a coral kind of wall that you can go down also. Um, yeah, and it's it's not it's not um, too deep, but um, you, um, you you can you can go off into deeper areas if 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 you like to free dive. But otherwise, you can float on top with your, um, you put a life jacket under your stomach or without, and uh, you can just gently float above the coral and look at all the marine life. Cool. Um, any students have questions? Yeah. Do you, okay, you guys have questions? Not yet. You guys are excited. Hey, we leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, guys, again, I recorded this, so I'm going to send you everything. Um, I hope that that was informative and that you have a better idea of what you're going to experience. You're going to love Costa Rica. You're going to have a blast. And uh, I look forward to seeing all your guys' photos and have fun. Buena vida. Thank you, Christian. My, you. my, my pleasure. Thank you, guys. And I'll get this orientation pack fixed for you guys. My apologies. Antonio, Antonio's in trouble tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.